New England Fishing is brought to you by those who live like a pro. With GMC Sierra Denali, we are professional grade. And brought to you by Garmin, we'll take you there. Pursuit Boats, explore life in a pursuit. Your New England Yamaha outboard dealer. Reliability starts here. And by Bosun's Marine, we share your passion. I know a special place, a certain corner of the country where the fishing is pretty good. A place with deep lakes and surf-pounded beaches, marsh-lined estuaries and lazy forest streams, roaring ocean rips and small secluded ponds. A place called New England. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as we explore the region's diverse fishing destinations, chase its many species, and forge new fishing adventures on New England Fishing. For New England saltwater fishermen, the late fall can be a depressing time. Most of the seasonal game fish have hightailed it south, and it's simply getting too cold to pursue the remaining resident species. By Thanksgiving, it's usually time to plan a tropical getaway, tune up the ice fishing gear, or simply hunker down for the winter hibernation. But there's another option for anglers who can't seem to get enough of their salty sport, and I got my first taste of it last December on the Housatonic River in western Connecticut. The river is one of a handful of estuaries in Connecticut that host a population of striped bass that thrives through the winter. For whatever reason, these holdover bass choose not to migrate further south come late fall and remain available to anglers willing to brave the elements. One such fisherman is Captain Ian Devlin, a longtime fly fishing and light tackle guide in the Norwalk area. A good launching point for trailer boaters looking to access the Lower Housatonic is the public ramp at the mouth of the river in the town of Stratford. That's where I met Ian on a frigid morning that had the docks slick with rime. Needless to say, there was no waiting in line to launch Ian's flat skiff. I first started guiding in high school before I was able to get my captain's license. I was too young to get my captain's license, so I was guiding in other people's boats because there's a huge demand for that around here. People get the stuff, but they don't know how to use it or where to go. Well, I knew that part, I just couldn't get the stuff. So it kind of stemmed from that in high school. So I was a sophomore in high school in 1992 is when I had my first paid trip on, on a client's boat and then eventually got my captain's license five years later in 1997 and I've been guiding for a quarter of a century now. <laughs> so the part about guiding that I really love is watching somebody experience it for the first time. Whether it be being on the salt water for the first time or a river, um, experiencing their first hook set on a fish, their first hook set on a specific species that they wanted to catch. I mean, that's, that's a magical thing. I mean, that's, that's a new experience. That's a new um, experience that they've never had before, they wanted to do, and, and watching them do that, you know, I'm, I'm watching it, you know, in my eyes, through their eyes, and that's a magical, interaction that you have. Good morning. Well, yeah, good morning. <laughs> it's a beauty. A little chilly, but hey, a little brisk.
Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. This isn't your normal nine to five. Every day, there's a new puzzle to solve and no two days look the same. We get hands-on experience and continue a boating tradition passed down from generation to generation. This tradition has survived recessions and has been able to adapt and grow with new technology. This isn't your normal job, and that's why we love it. The boating industry is full of opportunities. Find out more about our careers by visiting MassBoatingCareers.com. The tidal portion of the Housatonic is an odd mix of industrial buildings and marshland, with highway bridges and train tracks spanning the river. On a chilly November morning, it seemed a lonely, desolate place, an odd setting and an odd season for pursuing striped bass. And yet, here we were. We picked our way upriver, Ian monitoring his depth sounder for the telltale marks of stripers, which enter the river in mid to late November, gathering in the deeper holes. Oddly enough, the fish seem to prefer the cooler river water as opposed to the relatively warmer Long Island Sound. It's just another mystery surrounding these holdover bass. As we neared the head of tide in Derby, where the Housatonic and Naugatuck rivers merge, Ian's sounder lit up with the marks of fish hugging the bottom. Further evidence of their presence was provided by several shore fishermen, who were hooking fish after fish from the banks. There, though. Yeah. There you go. Oh, Mr. Who Satanic Scraper. All right, man. They're here. <laughs> Double hookup. Sweet. They are just stacked up in here. Do the honors. Oh yeah, you, you already got a fish, fish in your hand. <laughs> yeah, better you than me uh, having to stick your hand in that cold water. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's a fish on every cast almost. these river fish. Mm -hmm. what, uh, you obviously like spinning gear, so walk us through the whole outfit that, you, that we have here. Yeah, typically I use a seven foot length rod, regardless of what power. We're using a medium power, medium action uh, rated rod. Mm -hmm. with 15 pound braid, I got 3000 series reel. Mm -hmm. A short trace leader of anywhere from 15 to 20 pound or even as high as 30, mm -hmm. with a small fast clip. 
and, and you're tying it you're tying the braid directly to the leader to the leader, yes. And what knot do you like? I, to use if I'm using similar diameters, if I'm, I say I've got 15 pound braid and I might be a light leader 12 or 15 pound fluorocarbon, I might be using a double uni knot. Mm -hmm. If I'm using dissimilar connections, you know, I've got a diameter connections, I've got 15 pound power pro to say 30, I'd be using an Alberto knot, which I have a lot of confidence in. Okay, yep, great. So that 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 line to, line to leader connection lets you reel that uh, reel that connection right into the guides so you can get better casting accuracy. Yes, it also although, helps with blanding the fish as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. What if your truck was like two trucks, one designed for everyday driving and one built to handle the demands of trailering a boat? Well, thanks to the tow haul mode on the GMC Sierra Denali, it's like getting two trucks in one. Tow haul mode helps you take full advantage of the Sierra Denali's powerful engine. Activated by a button on the shift lever, tow haul modifies the shift mapping of the truck's standard six-speed transmission. The result is higher shift points for more power under acceleration and earlier downshifts to promote engine braking, thereby reducing wear on the vehicle's brakes. In addition, tow haul mode activates the Denali's tow haul mode grade braking that assists in maintaining desired vehicle speeds when driving on downhill grades by using the engine and transmission to slow the vehicle. Auto grade braking not only slows the vehicle more efficiently, it can reduce brake rotor temperatures during a braking event. Tow haul mode, just one more clever feature on the GMC Sierra Denali designed to make trailering easier so you can have more fun on the water. Explore, experience, and enjoy your life in pursuit. Pursuit Boats. For more than 60 years, we have built premium boats with unmatched quality, durability, and performance. Whether you want action, adventure, or relaxation, we have the boat for you. We offer a wide range of models from 23 to 38 feet. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. No matter what your boating style is, Pursuit has what you need. Contact your local dealer today and explore, experience, and enjoy your life in Pursuit. For details, visit PursuitBoats.com. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3-liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. The Housatonic is one of Connecticut's longest rivers, flowing for nearly 150 miles from its headwaters in the Berkshires of Massachusetts. Its upper stretches produce excellent fishing for trout and smallmouth bass, and the Housie is considered hallowed waters among southern New England fly fishermen. Sadly, as the river flows south, it picks up man-made debris much of it accumulating along the banks in the tidal portion of the river. Ian and others volunteer their time and energy to help clean the river, but their efforts barely make a dent in the huge amount of pollution. This is like the Benjamin Button striper. The Benjamin Button striper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, that's like the first one we caught. Yeah. There we go. There's another good, you know, better fish. Better schoolie? Yeah. Better schoolie. Yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, pulling good, man. He's giving a good account of himself. Oh, yeah. Let's not lose this one.
there must have been thousands of striped bass in the river. The ones we caught were all below legal size, although Ian has taken much bigger fish. In past years, bass up to 30 pounds have been pulled from the Hoosie during winter, mostly at night. of the uh, the lures now we're using this al gags uh, lure mm -hmm. and an al gag uh, lead head tell us how you like to rig these up uh, for the water the typical water depths that you encounter here right we're fishing anywhere from 15 to 30 feet of water and we're using it today we're using a half ounce al gags whip it uh, this is actually a whip it fish lure okay and uh, this is a his, his jig head that's a half ounce and that's got about the right sink rate for the depth of water we're fishing. Kind of a slow current with the tide, and um, it has the good ability to feel the bottom, mm -hmm. which is definitely critical. Yep, and you're a big believer in the single hooks in this fishery. Tell us why. I, I am, because the, the amount of fish that are here are a lot, and they're here for a reason. They're hibernating. So you're kind of taking advantage of a fish, shooting fish in a barrel, So and you're going to have situations where you're catching a lot of fish. So treble hooks are just going to mess up the fish. So I really prefer using lures like a jig head that have a single hook or a fly that has a single hook. Um, mm -hmm. No trebles, not a big fan of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, In just gen causes, general, it just it's more... Causes less, less damage to the fish and uh, they have a better recovery and, yes. and so forth. You get them off the easier to release as well. All the above. When fishing swim baits or jigs for the Hoosie stripers, the lure must be fished very close to the bottom. After making a cast, leave the bale open so the lure can free fall. You can tell when it reaches bottom by watching the V wake on the surface created by the line. When it stops, you know you're there. Begin a slow, steady retrieve interspersed with occasional short jerks of the rod to make the lure hop or dart. If the fish are there, it shouldn't take long to draw a strike. Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. Pursuit built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in pursuit. Tell me, tell me about how this how this fishery progresses. So when do the fish first start entering the river, and walk us through sort of the, the how it how it plays out. Well, I would probably say where it starts is actually at the end of the season. So let's begin in November, um, where the striped bass will come in from Long Island Sound into uh, the Housatonic River. They also come into the Connecticut River and the Thames River, two other rivers that are in Connecticut that harbor striped bass for the winter. 
but you know, here on the Housatonic, it, everything starts happening in November. And most years, later October, it starts happening then. And then over the period of, let's say, of a month or so, uh, you know, body, different bodies of fish will start coming in. And eventually, this place will have a rather significant population as red bass. Like thousands and thousands of them. Yes. Yeah, crazy. And, they, and you can catch them right through the winter? Yes, you can. Wow, yeah, right. And then they tend to depart usually sometime in April. On here, Tom, on the fly. Oh, you got one on the fly? Yeah. Awesome. You want the jigging action? Way to go. So you just switch. You just switched it up, Ian, uh, yeah. with your with the fly. Yeah, I put on a clouser. Sometimes a weighted jigging style fly is what they want. Yeah. The action. Nice. Um, All right. You got one on the fly. Other times they want a static fly where it's just sitting there. Yep. Unweighted fly. Well, he uh, certainly inhaled that fly. Got him. Got him. Well, we won't see. In the fly department, a nine weight outfit will do the job nicely and a fast sink line or shooting head is needed to get the fly down to the fish. The leader can be anywhere from seven to nine feet, ending in a 12 to 20 pound test shock tippet, depending on how finicky the fish are. A variety of patterns will work, but a large clouser type fly with heavy dumbbell eyes is good for fishing deep. Wait at least 10 seconds for the fly to sink before beginning your retrieve. Long, slow strips of the line often work best, but don't be afraid to mix things up if the fish don't immediately respond. I got into fishing um, through my dad and my mother. Um, individually, they split up when I was young, and uh, they kind of got me into the outdoors through fishing. And I kind of liked it, and it kind of grew from there. And my grandmother lived on the water in Rowayton, part of Norwalk, and uh, so I learned uh, pretty quickly about striped bass and bluefish. My first big bluefish blitz that I experienced, I was hooked for life. You know, when you see 15 pound to 20 pound bluefish crashing bunker right against the beach under the rocks, it's not something you really forget. When you can show somebody who's been doing it a while and watch them learn something about a fish they've been fishing longer than I've been alive and watch them, that's a unique experience too. So I can take somebody, you know, who's never even been on the water and, and each moment, regardless of what fish it is, they're experiencing it fresh. 
But on the other end of it, I can take a veteran who's been out here 40, 50 years and show them something about the fish that they love and show them a totally different angle on, on the fish that they love. And, and watching them experience that for the first time is really special. That's something I like to do a lot. I'm Captain Ian Devlin. I'm a fishing guide in Southwest Connecticut. Add me to the list of fishermen that Ian Devlin has introduced to a new and different aspect of striper fishing. Our day on the Housatonic was an eye-opening, if bone-chilling, experience for sure, and a good example of how you can always learn something new when it comes to fishing and stripers. Well, that's a wrap on another action-packed episode of New England Fishing. To learn more about fishing in this great part of the world, be sure to check out NewEnglandFishingTV.com. The site is filled with great articles, videos, gear and boat reviews, fishing news, and much more. And don't forget to order your copy of New England Fishing Magazine, a big, bold, glossy publication packed with informative how-to articles that will help you catch more and bigger fish all season long. Until next time, I'm Tom Richardson for New England Fishing. Thanks for watching.